in the world of closure, the de facto build tool is line again. But there's been a shift lately to start using the closure CLI and using that as the build tool instead. Um, so instead of using Linegan to create a new project, I thought it'd be an interesting little exercise to try to set up a brand new project from scratch just using the closure CLI and what's called the depths.eden. So the first thing that we want to do is create an empty directory. And I don't really want to know what to call this, so I think I'm just going to do make directory learn depths. Sure. And we'll just cd into it and open it up. That's not where I want it to be. There, that's better. And we're just going to make one file, which is going to be called depths.eden. So touch depths.eden. And this is going to be a closure map. Uh, so it'll look like this. And that is very small. Let me see if I get up the font of this. Um, um, so the first thing we want to do is define the path of where our, all of our source files are going to live. So I'm going to create a attributor called paths using the paths keyword. And this is going to be a list. And for this project, I'm just going to make one path. And it's going to be inside of source. And generally, you will have it inside of CLJ. Um, that's because if you create a full stack project, you have all of your backend code, all your actual closure code will be in the CLJ directory. And all of your closure script code is going to be in a CLJS directory, but both of them will live in the source directory. I said directory a lot. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And then next, we're going to want to um, let me just add a comment here so it stops moving. And we're going to add another keyword. And this one's going to be called depths, uh, where we're going to define all of the dependencies that this project wants. Um, for now, I'm just going to do closure. And the reason why you define closure as a dependency of a closure project is just to uh, make sure that you define what version you're using and version I'm just gonna really quick check what version I have so CLJ dash version um, it's also a good time to point out that you should probably have the closure at uh, the command line and do, 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 do. that's weird um Maybe it's because it's reading from this right now. So I'm just going to do 1.10.1. I think that's the version I have. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, duh. Okay. I guess dash dash version isn't actually a good or a valid option so I do have 1.10.1 .1, so that's correct uh, I'm gonna quit the REPL here and I think that's all we need for now um, let's actually create the path or the yeah the file structure so we want to make um, source CLJ and let's open that up and the project name is called Learn Depths. So this is gonna be, um, so I'm gonna do touch source CLJ core.clj. And here we'll define the namespace of Learn Depths. Learn Depths.core. And I'll just make a main function here. Um, defin dash main which takes no arguments and it's gonna just return hello world so now to run this project uh, while we're inside of the the learn depths directory at the root of our project 
Uh, we can do CLJ, uh, invoking the closure CLI tool. And we could run the main function uh, doing dash m, passing in the file name, I believe, or the namespace. Um, so learn depth.core. And that should give us our hello world. Or not. Why not? Du -du 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 -du. Learn that cannot locate. Du -du -du -du. Oh, I have to use underscores. Do I? Where? Oh, right. I. So there's actually supposed to be another directory underneath source slash clj. So what we need to do is create that file. So I'm going to do make directory source clj and it's going to be learn depths. Uh, this time with the underscore. Uh, this is because Java doesn't recognize hyphens in names, but Clojure does. So underneath, the, uh, like, under the hood, all the Java class paths are transformed from underscores to hyphens, which is a little confusing, but um, that's just a, a thing that you kind of need to know in Clojure. So anyways, uh, we're going to move source clj core into learn depths. So source clj learn depths core dot clj. And that should allow us to run the command clj learn depths.core, which should give us hello world. And it does. Now, this command is kind of annoying. It's kind of long, and um, it can get a lot longer if you add more options to it. So, like, uh, imagine having more than just one file and it goes on forever, like this. Um, so, Inside of our depths.eden, uh, what we could do is add another keyword called aliases. And this one, I'm just going to add one alias, which is going to be run. And all we're going to do is just pass in um, the, the command that we just created, or that we just ran. So it's going to have the main options, so main ops of, this is a list, right? Yeah. So of dash m, no space, and the um, namespace of learn depths dot core. Anything else we need? No. Nope. So that's all we have to do. And then to run this alias, we just do clj, the, so the command line again. And we're going to do dash a for the the alias um, option and it's gonna be of the keyword run and we should also get hello world from here which took a while but there it is and then finally there's one more alias that I want to add before I finish up this little um, introduction I guess to depths.eden and that's going to be the REPL um, alias. Because since we're in an editor, uh, the real power of Clojure is interactive development. And to do that, we need some uh, REPL enhancements. So I'm going to create a REPL alias here. And it's going to take in some extra depths. Uh, and the extra depths that we want is just nREPL slash nREPL. And the version is going to be uh, 0 0.6.0. So 0 0.6.0. Um, it's a little crowded in here, but that's OK. And let's see, is there anything else we need? Nope, cool. So we're going to close out that map. And let's go check if our REPL works. So to do this, I'm, I'm actually going to close out this side of the window here. 
So I get rid of that and that. And I'm just going to open up an internal REPL here. And we're going to use Kalva to jack in. Um, so we're going to start a project REPL and connect using the closure CLI. And we're going to be using the REPL name or REPL alias. So we're going to just let Kalva do all its things and connect. And open up the web view as it does. All right, cool. So here's your REPL. And we're just going to do uh, 1 plus 1, which is 2. So because now we have the REPL um, open, we could load up the, so we load the namespace into the REPL. And now we should have um, some IntelliSense because all the IntelliSense is provided by the REPL. And we could also um, add some things. So let's test our main function inside here. And we'll just run it. So eval the current form which is nil, because it doesn't return anything. It only prints hello world. But we can also evalu evaluate it in the REPL window. Oh, it's down here. Why doesn't it do the print line? Oh, that's weird. Um, let me see if I can do that again. So, oh, that's the load. Eval in REPL window. There you go. So we got the main and hello world. And if we uh, do some changes, uh, so let's say we change this to goodbye. We can still be able to do to get that as long as we reload the REPL and then evaluate it. And we get our changes without having to restart our thing, our server or our REPL. Then we just reload the file. So we get a little bit of interactivity. Anyways, uh, so that's a quick introduction of how you can set up a project using depths.eden. Um, if you want to know more about depths.eden and the Closure CLI, there's a really good video by Sean Corfield who goes over all of his aliases and his global um, depths.eden file so that you get a little more in depth of what you can do with just the CLI and not have to uh, need line again. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.